I grew up in Brooklyn, in a house that was full of books. My father is a writer. My mother's from England. She would go back to visit, and she would bring back little skeins of yarn and jars of marmalade, and those would go up into the cabinets mixed in with the stuff that just came from down the street. I could open the doors of these cabinets and immediately know all the stuff in Gil Sands came from the UK, and everything else was from the States. This is what my childhood memories were made of. I didn't really realize at the time that I was already paying attention to type so closely. As a teenager, I was working both as a writer and as a painter. I thought that I would have to pick one and leave the other behind. Almost by accident, I discovered that there was this field called typeface design. This was the intersection of being a writer and being a painter. This was a field that a person could go into. Someone could actually make a living drawing the alphabet. And that settled it right there. There was just no looking back. Typefaces have to do more than just one thing. One can be purely technical. It can be operational, fitting the workflow of the organization that'll be using it. It can be aesthetic, projecting a certain personality and reinforcing a certain brand. At their best, when they're considered as well as they should be and fully realized, typefaces are answers to questions. In the course of developing Retina for the Wall Street Journal, the central the problem was to improve the clarity and the legibility of what existed already. It had to survive being printed at five and a half point on newsprint in really, really narrow columns of stock data. One of the most satisfying moments was hearing from a room full of retired stockbrokers. One of them apparently said, I don't know what you did, but I don't need my glasses anymore. Mallory began as a kind of stylistic experiment to see if I could make a typeface that had the same sort of background that I did, being half British, half American, kind of extroverted, but restrained, dignified, austere. I also wanted it to be operationally practical in presenting a large range of weights and combining easily with other typefaces. I've been designing typefaces for 25 years now. These days, it is really difficult to enter the market and become visible because there are so many fonts in the world right now. I think being a part of Typekit Marketplace is a great opportunity for us to stay visible in such a crowded field. Adobe's doing a great job of curating, so it's not just anyone who has happened to have made a font, it's the people who are putting a lot of thought and a lot of effort into this. People don't have to go digging and digging through the internet to find Mallory or to find Retina. It's actually really easy to find it. Just kind of emotionally, I like the idea of sharing this passion with a wider audience. You know, I, I want everyone to be as excited about this stuff as I am, because I think it's fantastic.